I used to love the barbershop atmosphere. When you cut hair, you got to impress the person hair you cut, and you want to impress the guy that's next to you. Conversation is, is, is fun, it's, you know, we laughing and joking. It's all the same thing that the studio is, you know what I mean? It's just a, just a different art form. Now what even got me interested in uh, Lil Uzi was my son. My son is 10 years old. He's like, Daddy, you know this song, Lil Uzi Vert? You know, I heard of his name, but like, how you listen to that? I don't let you listen to you know certain things. Or, well, you heard him on the radio, how you know about him? We was at Lenox Mall uh, one day. It was on a Sunday after church. And I'm coming out of the mall, and he's coming in. I said, let me take, I want to take a picture with you. My son gonna flip out, because you like his favorite guy. When we, when we took the picture, at the same time, he was like, man, we gotta work, let's you know, exchange number. So we exchanged number, and he was like, man, I'm in the studio tonight, and I'm finishing up my tape. I wanna be, you know, I gotta have my tape done in the next couple of days. So I was like, you know what? Let me go over here and, you know, and rock with him. Strictly on the strength of my son, I know my son gonna be like, oh, you did some song, you know, you did some music with Lil Uzi Vert. You know, I came up there with, you know, with some tracks, and we sat in the studio, and you know, he just started recording on all the beats I gave him. You know, I gave him maybe, 15 beats and he's just like, you know, I'm going crazy on all the beats. He hit me the next day like, Zay, I got some fire. So, you know, for the next couple of days, I just went up there and vibed out with him. And I was like, you know what? This is one of the guys that I might end up wanting to do a full project with because he's on fire, he got the gift, and he's young, he's in tune. And now I'm rocking with him. Now I want to do a whole lot of music with him. It's that new way. So doing the project Beast Mode with Future, was almost like a, I think, for me, a, a, a reinvention of myself. Me and Future has been rocking with each other since the beginning. I remember when Future used to rap on my beats when I never knew who he was, and he wasn't any, you know, he wasn't nobody yet. You know, he was just him and Scooter, they was rapping on beats, and I didn't really know him. So uh, to come back, you know, years later and do a full project, and it be, to me, one of the hardest projects to ever come out was something special to me. I remember uh, he called me like, Zay, I want you to come, you know, I want you to come and listen to something. I've been doing some, you know, rapping over your beats here lately. And uh, I just remember being in the studio and everybody just like hopping like, boy, that's that hop. Zay, boy, you got to do number Zay. You got to do a project with number Zay. And I think that's how the future is. He a lot, once he lock in with a producer, he just want to do that. He just want to, you know, work with that one person. So I think since the idea was thrown in the air right then, it kind of made them be like, okay, well, you know what, I'm just going to do all Zay. Zay, uh, can you give me some more beats? Zay, can you stay here and watch me record? I'm going to record to all these beats. I want you to sit here and watch me. I want you to be around and tell me what you think. So, you know, that turned into me showing up that day to listen to what we had already done to, you know, we going two weeks straight every day. I'm coming there making new beats, bringing them new beats, and sitting there watching them record. I think Future at the time, especially where he was at in his career, he wanted to come back and just really punish everything, show everybody that, that you know, he the best. And I, it man, just blew my mind with the music that he was coming up with, you know, on the tracks I was giving him. So that's one of the most, you know, projects I'm most proud about. Whoa. So when we first lock in, Versace was really one of the, you know, out of the first Seven songs we did, Versace was, you know, out of that first seven. Of course you got Quavo, which is, he almost like the lead guy. It's like, he's gonna kind of set the, the tone for whatever record they're doing. It's like, okay, I'm gonna do the hook, you know, and, and then then take off and, and, um, and offset. You know, they just, you know, they, everybody just going hard. I, I think it's competitive because they they're trying to outdo each other on the verses, which is a good thing. But, you know, nine times out of 10, Quavo is kind of leading it. And then sometimes you might have, you know, like Takeoff come in and do the hook and, and he lead the song. But for the most part, I think just because it's three of them and they, they are real good MCs, they're competitive with each other and it, you know, it's a good thing. That's, that's what makes their music as good as, it, as good as it is. Working with OJ the Juice Man on Juice World, this is back when I took a special interest in uh, OJ. This is when Gucci Man had got locked up on the, the murder beef. So, you know, he was, he was down for a while. So, you know, of course, me being a new and up and coming producer, I'm still looking for, you know, 
something else to do. I can't record with Gucci, so I'm, I'm still looking for guys around the neighborhood that I can work with, you know, to, to keep, you know, keep what I got going on. And OJ was was a um, was a part of this this uh, record label called Never Again, who Gucci was with at first, you know, when he first started. And uh, you know, and so Juice was rapping on my beats. I didn't know who he was, but he was up at the studio at Never Again Studios rapping on on some beats. And my buddy Woe was like, man, you need to come up here and he hear the artist, you know, OJ, man, he up here killing your track. And I remember OJ did a song called Everything on Me. And I used to, you know, watch him perform it at the little open mics and go out and perform it. And I just took a real liking to him. So I just took OJ in just like I did with Gucci. And it's like, hey man, come over to the house and just rap on all the beats. I just make beats. You rap, you know, you write to them and, and I record it. And we just, you know, just did a whole bunch of songs. And that's how a project came about. Since the way I, was, I took the same formula I was doing with Gucci and did with, with OJ the Juice Man. And that's when Juice Man, you know, Juice World came about. I'm getting money was like his first little single. Then Make the Trap Say Hey came after that. So, you know, I always took a special, special uh, pride in working with OJ the Juice Man. I feel like he's, you know, one of my artists. He had recorded two songs already, but you can tell he was kind of ready to go to another level and, you know, do something a little, a little different. So when I told him, I said, you ought to do a song with no chorus or nothing, just you rapping, just, you know, a long verse, just one long verse, I, I put the beat on. You know, he just went in the booth and said, all right, okay, I know what I want to do. Push record, I know, you know, I know what I want to do. I'm sitting there listening to him, for, you know, start rapping. He's like, yeah, you right, Zay No Hook, you know, on the intro. And uh, when he started off, like, I'm starting off my day with a blunt of perk. It was just something that, man, it almost made my hair on my arm stand up. Like just the, the feeling and the, and the way he was delivering it, the record and what he was saying, it just made me almost, you know, I turned into a fan right then again. Like, like Gucci the hardest guy out, man. Like this, <laughs> this is the best rapper to me right now. So to this day, that's one of my favorite songs that we recorded together. As rappers, a lot of times people want to say a lot. They got to, you know, say a lot of words to get their point across. Gucci just chooses the right words to say all what you were saying with all those words, but simplify it where, you know, a, a kid can, can mimic it and, and say it, you know. It's like a nursery rhyme to me, you know what I mean? But it's street, it's, it's gutter. He might be talking about robbing, but it's gonna sound so much like, you know, like ABC that you can sing along with it and you're gonna like it and it's gonna feel good. What else we do? We almost did the him and Yo Gotti project all in this same day. We started like at seven in the morning and ended like maybe four, about four the next morning. And we just had, you know, we did jury that day. We just did a whole bunch of songs in that day and that's just how we like to work. We just feeding off each other. And then we might call somebody, call OJ over here, call, you know, Rocco over here, call Yo Gotti over here, you know, and it's just like, that's how our energy we, you know, and we having, we having fun doing it the whole, we having fun the whole time while we doing it. I, I can't really say when and what's the name of it, you know. I just know he's working, he's working real hard right now. And I can't really say when, when the project is coming out, but you best believe it's going to be a lot more Zaytoven and Gucci project, just, you know, us too. I'm always winging it, man. When I did the Usher song, I didn't know that he was going to call me or they folks were going to call me and say, hey, we want to do something with you. So that's the, that's the exciting part about it. Like when Drake, like, you know, when Drake get on a song or Drake call or send me a text like, hey, I just did some fire to one of your beats, you know? I don't, you know, I don't be knowing, so I'm, I'm winging it. Yo, yo, what up, man? It's your boy Zaytoven. And this right here is my track record.